what is going on everybody tech enthusiast here and this is a follow-up video as to why the lenovo thinkpad t480 is still a very good laptop to buy even today so in this video i will be replacing the thermal paste with the honeywell ptm 7950 which should be more effective than traditional thermal paste i will also upgrade the ram from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes now with that being said let's dive in if you have an internal battery or you're not sure just follow this step to disable it now with the laptop turned off we're going to turn it on you should see a prompt about interrupting normal startup press enter then in this sub menu there are a few options here we're going to press f1 to boot into the bios once there we're going to tap the right arrow key and press enter on config then go down and press enter on power then we're going to go all the way to the bottom to disable built-in battery and press enter then on the prompt press enter and then the laptop should turn off we're doing this step so we don't accidentally turn the laptop on with the laptop facing down there are four outer screws and two middle screws that need to be removed but before that we need to remove the external battery personally i'm going to start off with the middle screws and i'm going to speed up the video here one thing I want to mention is that none of the screws come out completely. They will stay in the case. Don't worry about that. So with all of the screws removed, firstly, I'm going to see if I can pry it open with my fingers. And so far, it does look like I can do it. So let me just uh, lift it up and you can see the opening here. And I'm just going to carefully continue opening it. But if you can't open it, make sure you do use a pry tool but be cautious at the same time as you don't want to break any of the clips inside so i'm just going to work my way around slowly until it comes off as i mentioned earlier in the video i will be upgrading the ram so we have two ram slots here this is the heat sink the fan on the left which is held by a fan plug and the heat sink is held by four phillips screws my 512 gigabyte ssd is on the top right hand side i'm not going to be upgrading it in this video okay so we're going to just zoom in now and the first thing we're going to remove is the fan plug so this could be a bit tricky if you want to remove it with your fingers so if you have this pry tool use it and again be a bit careful So once that comes off you may want to move it out of the way a little and the fan is not held by any screws and we're going to move to the heat sink and start unscrewing and i'm just going to speed up the video here so once all the screws are loosened again they're not going to come out they're going to stay in place don't worry about that so i'm just going to lift it out and turn it around and you can see the thermal paste is all dried up and this definitely needs to be cleaned now if you take a look at the CPU, you can see the thermal paste has spread more than it should and that also needs to be cleaned. Now to clean this, I will be using 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. You can buy that from Amazon or eBay. It is also recommended to use lint-free tissue. So I'm just going to dab some of the solution in the tissue and take my time just removing the thermal paste. Don't rush it here, just slowly remove it. And once again, I'm going to speed up the video. Then eventually, you may come to a point where it is hard to remove some of the paste. So you can use a Q-tip or a cotton bud. And that should do the trick. And then it should look clean like this. Next is the heat sink. And the cleaning process is pretty much the same like the CPU. But you can apply some pressure as it's not on the motherboard. So I'm just going to speed up the video and it should look really clean when finished like so. Now it is recommended to put the PTM 7950 in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes before using it. So it hardens up and it makes it easier to cut. So make sure you have the measurements and cut away. Now I do apologize here because I didn't realize the video goes out of focus. But it's not too important to see what's going on here. You basically are cutting it into the right size now one thing i do recommend is that you peel one of the corners and fold it so that way you can easily peel it out and put it onto the cpu or the heat sink all right so let's just get the laptop and once again i'm going to zoom in 
and I'm just going to place this uh, PTM 7950 on the larger side. You can do it on the smaller one, but just put it on the larger one so you get an idea of how it's going to be done. Now, once that is in place, you can, you know, apply a bit of pressure and then you need to remove the other see-through sticker. Now, this can get very tricky if you're doing it with your finger. A few moments later. It was actually quite the struggle and good thing I had this needle nose tweezer. And if you do have this, then I recommend that you use it from the get-go as you don't want to damage any of the PTM 7950. As you can see, some of the corner came off. It's not a big deal. I can always replace that in the future, but let's carry on. So with one done, there's no point of showing the process for the next one. And with the magic of editing, the other one is done now. And now moving on to the RAM. I'm going to be using 2GB RAM sticks, which is 2400 megahertz, which is the maximum supported speed. They're both Kingston brand, so there should be 100% compatibility. So we're going to lift the flap and you can see the RAM held by two clips on each side. So we're going to push them out gently outwards and the RAM stick should come out. So remember the orientation of the RAM stick as the cutout is not center and we're going to use the same orientation when we put in the new RAM stick. So lift up the flap and make sure it is aligned correctly. Push it in. That flap could be annoying. Once it is in, push it down and the clip should hold it down in place. Then it's pretty much the same process for the other RAM slot. So again, make sure it is aligned correctly. If it doesn't go in, that means the orientation is wrong. Gently push it down and you should hear a click sound. And that's it. The RAM upgrade is completed. So finally, I'm going to put the heatsink back on. So I'm just going to carefully turn it over. So what I'm going to do is make sure the front two screws align with the bottom two screw holes. And then just gently drop it in. Once those two are in, I'm going to make sure the back two are. Then all four screws are in place. Then I'm going to start screwing them in place and I'm going to start from the opposite ends. When you're finally done, you can go over each of them to make sure they are firmly screwed in. Make sure you don't apply too much pressure as you don't want to damage anything. And now we just need to plug in the fan plug and this shouldn't take too long. You should be able to do it with your fingers. But if you do have trouble, remember you've got that little tool that we use to remove the fan plug. So that's it, the fan plug is in and the upgrade is complete. Now before closing up, if there is any dust, now is probably a good time to blow it out. Now we're going to put the back case on and remember as I mentioned earlier, the screws are on the case. I'm not sure if it's going to be for everyone, but what we're going to do is just align it over the uh, laptop. Once you feel that all of the screws are in place, we're going to gently start pushing and applying pressure all over until we hear clicks. Make sure you go over all of them, maybe twice, as we want to make sure everything is in place. And then we can start screwing away. Remember, if you disable the battery in BIOS because of having an internal battery, the laptop won't boot unless you connect it to a power adapter. With the laptop booted into Windows, I'm just going to right click on the taskbar and go to Task Manager. Then go to the second icon for RAM. And now you can see on the top right hand corner, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the RAM is working perfectly fine. So here are the CPU temps are recorded with the old thermal paste and the new PTM7950. I did the test with the PTM7950 a week after the upgrade. And you can see the maximum temps have dropped by a good few degrees. The multi-core scores were also a little higher with the PTM7950. However, the added RAM doesn't make any difference here as the test is focused on the CPU. And here are the Geekbench 6 test results which were run in the same time frame. And here you can see the multi-core score results benefited with the added extra RAM. So conclusion, was it worth doing the upgrade? I think it was. The PTM7950 does help with the temperature. And not only that, I did find that sometimes before the fan used to just kick in during, you know, very light browsing. But with the PTM 7950, it barely happens. As for the RAM, it does make the laptop feel generally a little faster, especially if you've got multiple web tabs open.
So that wraps up for this video. What did you think? Will you be upgrading? Do let me know in the comment section. Now, if you have found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you in the next video.